Hello there. My name is Shane Carr. I'm the chair of the ICU for X subcommittee in the Unico Consortium, and I'm really excited today to tell you more about our project and what we can do for you. The needs for international software continue to evolve. Across the world, people are coming online with smartphones, smartwatches, and other small, low-resource devices, and it's important to be able to perform internationalization on the client side on those devices. The technology industry needs an internationalization solution for these environments that scales to dozens of programming languages and thousands of human languages. Enter ICU for X. After two and a half years of work by Google, Mozilla, Amazon, and community partners, the Unico Consortium is releasing ICU for X 1.0, the first stable release. Built from the ground up to be lightweight, portable, and secure, ICU for X learns from decades of experience to bring localized date formatting, number formatting, collation, text segmentation, and more to devices that, until now, did not have a suitable solution. The first key component of ICU for X's value proposition is being lightweight. We measure this on three axes, small binary size, low memory usage, and low CPU requirements. To achieve a small binary size, We've optimized our library for dead code elimination, or tree shaking. Developers can statically link ic for x into their binaries to produce an optimally small executable. In addition, you can, they can perform static analysis on that executable to figure out exactly what locale data they need to include in order to build an optimally small data file. To achieve low memory usage, we introduce novel strategies for runtime loading of data involving zero memory allocations. We support dynamically loaded zero copy deserialized data across all architectures, as well as compile time linking of required data without deserialization overhead. Our data schema is designed so that individual components can use the immutable locale data directly with minimal post processing. And there is an explicit data provider argument to each function that requires data making it clear when data is required and centralizing the data loading into that specific function. For the third bullet point, reducing CPU usage improves latency and battery life, which is important to most clients. ic achieves this by writing in Rust, a high-performance language, utilizing zero-copy deserialization, and measuring every change against performance benchmarks. The ic team uses a benchmark-driven approach to achieve highly competitive performance numbers. Every newly added component has benchmarks and future changes to those components should avoid regressing on those benchmarks. The second main value proposition for ICU for X is portability. The X in ICU for X is a nod to this design goal, portability to many different environments. ICU for X has official wrappers in more than one target language. We do this with tooling we've developed that generates idiomatic bindings in many programming languages that encourage I18N best practices. We currently support C and C++ via FFI, or Foreign Functional Interface, as well as JavaScript and TypeScript via WebAssembly. Importantly, uh, all of these bindings are easy to maintain, and new programming languages can be added with plugins without needing any additional I18N expertise. The third main value proposition, value proposition for ic for x is security. Rust's type system and ownership model guarantee memory safety and thread safety, preventing large classes of bugs and vulnerabilities. Next, I'm going to talk about key decisions that led us to develop ic for x in the way that we did. One question I get a lot is, why a new library? The answer is that ic for x solves a different set of problems for a different type of clients than any existing internationalization library that exists in the industry right now. We seek to be the gold standard for bringing I18N to new programming languages and resource-constrained environments. In order to achieve this proposition, we need to optimally solve for these unique use cases, and that's what ic for x seeks to do. Another question I get a lot is, why use ic for x when there is i18n in the platform? 
The answer is that many of the same people who work on IC4X also work on making IHN available in the platform. In addition to IC4X, I chair ECMA 402, the subcommittee for internationalization in JavaScripts, where we work to make APIs available in the ECMAScript Intel object. I have teammates who work on Android.ICU and other smartphone native libraries. IC4X complements platform-based IHN solutions by being the ideal polyfill. When we add features into the platform, those features can sometimes take five or more years to gain enough availability to be useful in client-side applications. IC4X can enable clients to add more locales than those available in the platform. And IC4X also enables clients who require consistency of behavior across devices. I also want to highlight some of the key benefits of the IC4X data model. First, data files can be shared across versions of the IC4X library, which makes it much easier for multiple clients to share the same data file. Second, locale data can be upgraded at runtime, making it easier to push updates and load more locales on the fly. And third, the IC4X data pipeline is fully configurable, so you can customize it to the needs of your specific application. Now, I'm going to talk about the status of the IC4X project. As I mentioned earlier, we started about two and a half years ago as a collaboration between organizations in order to bring this project to fruition. Throughout 2020 and 2021, we did major development work and made several snapshot releases during our development process. This year in 2022, we are making our 1.0 release in order to make IC4X more available to clients around the industry. In 2023 and beyond, we will focus on uh, development of additional features and onboarding more clients. IC4X 1.0 is being made available in Rust, C, C++, JavaScript, and TypeScript. We have core functionality implemented, and we will continue to add more functionality based on what clients need. For more information, you can visit our GitHub repository. The best way to shape the direction of IC4X and help us prioritize what features to implement is to engage with us. You can open discussions on the GitHub repository. This here is a, a demo of the IC4X project running in WebAssembly. Everything you see here runs natively in the browser. There are no requests being made to the server. Um, and this demonstrates three of the, of the key uh, things that we ship in IC4X 1.0. First, fixed decimal formatting. Uh, you can see how the number shows up with localized grouping separators and digits with specific grouping strategies. On this page, we see the date formatting. You can change the date length, the calendar system, and the locale. And on the segmentation page over here, we have a break iterator running where you can see how we can do word segmentation on Japanese and Chinese text. Thank you so much for listening. To learn more about the IC4X project, please visit our website at ic4x.unicode.org. And to learn more about how to get started as a member of Unicode, go to www.unicode.org. Thank you again for listening. I look forward to hearing from you more um, as you engage with IC4X.